So we meet again in St. Peter's Pepper with pickled peppers. Peter Piper pecked a Peter Piper pecked a Peter Piper pecked a Peter Piper pecked a pack of pickled peppers. If Peter Piper picked a Peter Piper picked a pack of pickled peppers. If Peter Pepper picked a pack of cut. So we meet again in St. Peter's part of the Saint. No, just pop him back in his cage. He's just weed on yeah on me. Oh hi guys. Um, this is mainly a shout out to Year Three and Four. Whoop whoop. However, there are some children that are still not back in school, even though their classmates are back. For whatever reason, if you're at home, we just want you to know that we're thinking about you and we miss you very much. School is not the same. It's not the same at all. You're missing for a start, so we haven't got our St Peter's family all together. There's not that much fun at break time. We have to stay apart. We can't always use resources. School is very, very different. Now, your teachers are actually teaching other year groups because we're only allowed 15 children in a class. Mrs Paget is teaching some year six children. Miss Burgess is teaching children from different age groups. So they really miss you, but they haven't got time to provide you with the lessons. So they said, if they're teaching our children, we should all be teaching you. So that's what we're here to do. So every day, although we're not your teachers, we're going to give you a daily task to do at home. So Mrs. Paget and Miss Burgess gave me the job of a literacy lesson, persuasive writing. Asked the children to write a letter using language such as, I believe, clearly, however. Furthermore, therefore, in conclusion. Honest, I don't really like teaching year three and four. I prefer reception and little cute ones. You're still cute. You're still cute. Do I have to do this? No, everything's under control, Mrs. Paget. We're just getting on with our persuasive writing about planes. She was gone. Okay, so let's talk about school without you. It's just not the same here. We have no house competitions. No sports day. We can't even have proper parties because of social distancing. And what I'm really upset about, and you will be definitely if you're school council, is no ice bucket challenge. You know when we have the ice bucket challenge and last year it was Miss Burgess and Miss Woods have a bucket of icy cold water with ice cubes in it thrown over them while we sit there and eat ice lollies. It's not happening. However, I went to Mr Holditch and I said this. Hi Mr Holditch, is it okay if we have the ice bucket challenge again this year? No, not this year. All the children aren't back in school. Please? No way. So that's what happened. I need your help. You need to change Mr Holditch's mind. And I know you're not here in school, but let's do it. And I will film it and I will upload it to YouTube so that everybody can see. You could vote for any teacher you liked, really. But the vote isn't the important part. The important part is that you convince Mr Holditch to let us have the Ice Buckets Challenge in the first place. What could you say? Dear Mr Holditch, I firmly believe it is our right as pupils of St Peter's to have our annual Ice Bucket Challenge. Dear Mr Holditch, we feel a bit left out being at home. However, if you would consider our letter writing to you, asking you for the Ice Bucket Challenge, we would be so happy to feel included and be able to watch the Ice Bucket Challenge take place online. Dear Mr Holditch, due to the coronavirus, I believe that if we added some soap to the ice bucket, it would help keep the teachers clean and keep the virus at bay. Therefore, it is my duty to write you this letter and change your mind to allow us to have the ice bucket challenge again this year. So you can use something like this to plan your letter. The main idea of the title, the introduction, why you write it to Mr Holditch in the first place. Then that's, they've left three points there, which are, can you think of three reasons why you should be allowed the ice bucket challenge? At the bottom there, your conclusion. These are some persuasive writing prompts there. I'll take a picture of that and leave that at the end of the video for you to refer to. One idea is to use post-it notes. 
pop down your ideas, all of the reasons why you think we should be allowed the ice bucket challenge, and then use those post-it notes to write a paragraph at a time to Mr Holditch. You need to convince him. You need to convince him to let us have the annual ice bucket challenge. Actually, do you remember the language that Miss Sturgis and Mrs Paget wanted you to write at the beginning? All of that persuasive language. Have a look and see if you can include those words and phrases in your writing. Because actually, it will be Mrs Paget and Miss Burgess that read the letters. They will then pass the letters on to Mr Holditch if you've remembered really good spelling, punctuation and grammar. They'll be so happy with you, they'll forward your letters onto Mr Holditch and then hopefully he'll be convinced to let us have the ice bucket challenge. Maybe ask your parent to have a look at a letter and how it's laid out and that will give you some examples of how to set out your letter. You can send it to us, you can post it to the school office, you could send us an email is fine as long as it's got that persuasive language in it or you could write it out, perhaps take a picture and send it to us via the school office. There are lots of different ways that you can get your letters to us. At the end of your letter, after your name, I'd like you to put PS. You may have seen that before. This means postscript, so it's an afterthought. And I would like you to put PS. I would like to vote for, and then write the name of the teacher that you would like to get the ice bucket over their head. Remember, if your letter is not convincing enough, your vote may not be included. So I want you to try really, really hard. Okay, have a look at who's here, guys. These are some of your teachers that you could vote for. If they're not here, you can still vote for them. These are just a few ideas. Mr Eastwood always gives you difficult questions on the Maths House Challenge. Miss Burgess sometimes sings in assembly. She deserves to be punished. Um, we can sit back with our lollies. Tidy your bedroom and maybe your parents will get you an ice lolly. Why don't you write a persuasive letter to your parents about why you should be allowed an ice lolly to sit back and watch the challenge? You are the only ones that can make this happen. We can sit back and... Yay! Okay, let's get your letters in then, everybody. We need to make this happen. We have got 84,000 subscribers now. And because of that, we've got some special merchandise. It's selling fast. We have the St Peter's school coat. We have the St Peter's sweatshirt. You can even now get St Peter's umbrellas. Oh, excuse me. Can I have a look? Yes. It's not 84,000. Not 84,000 subscribers. It's 84. 84. It's 84 subscribers. Awkward. Oh. And this is part of their regular school uniform. Okay. No problem. Okay. Forget the merch, guys. Okay, tomorrow you'll be having another lesson with a surprise teacher. Woo! Get right in those letters. I want to get some payback on teachers. I know it's hard that you haven't got your teachers teaching you, but I want you to persevere. That's one of our Christian values, perseverance. You've got three weeks left. Try and complete our daily tasks. Your parents are persevering. They're having to be your teacher and everything else. We can teach you, but we don't have to do your washing. Luckily, your smelly socks. Luckily for you, I don't do your cooking. So if you can try really hard, if you persevere with your schoolwork, try and help your parents out. Be really, really good. And we've only got three weeks left. I know you can do this. Say goodbye to Tom. Say bye, Tom. Meow. Okay, St Peter's party people. It's over to you now. Good luck with your letters. See you soon.